Thanks for joining me today. We are going to make fingerless mittens, very beginner friendly. I will list everything you need for this project in the description box, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to start by making a slip knot. And you can either put it on the anchor peg or your first peg. I'm just going to put it on my first peg and we're going to start with the e-wrap. If you have another cast on method that you like, you are free to do that. I am just going to do the basic e-wrap for now. To do the e-wrap cast on, you're making small little e's on each of the pegs. And you're going to do this the entire way around the loom. Okay, we have made our first round of the E-Wrap cast on, so now we're going to start again. We're going to make two rows, and remember my yarn is doubled, so I have, I'm working with two strands. Okay, we're back to our anchor peg, and now we are going to knit over. So we're going to take the bottom stitch and place it over the top on each peg. After this, we will be cast it onto the loom. Okay, now we're going to do a purl stitch. So we're going to take our working yarn and put it below the stitch on the peg, pull that stitch up, remove it off the peg. We're going to place the loop on the peg and pull our working yarn. So again, take the yarn down and off the peg and pull. And this is called the purl stitch. So we're going to do the complete, we're going to make a complete round of the purl stitch. There's the loop, take it off the peg and place the loop on the peg. Continue making the purl stitch the entire way around the loom. Okay, we're done with our purl stitch, so now we're going to make a basic flat knit stitch. So we're going to place our working yarn on top of the peg and take the bottom over the top. 
This is different than doing an e-wrap. We're not wrapping it around the peg. We're just placing it above and, and taking the bottom loop, or I'm sorry, the bottom stitch over the top. And this is the flat unit. It's also called the unit. We're going to do this for two rows. So do two rows of this knit. Okay, now we're going to do the e-wrap stitch all the way around the loom. So we will do a round of the e-wrap. Do that and I will meet you back. Okay, now we're going to knit over. So we're going to knit over all of the stitches. Okay, we're done with that. We're going to do that three times. So after you've done three e-wraps, you're going to do a row of the purl stitch.
Continue doing this all the way around. Okay, now we're going to do another row of the e-wrap stitch. So now we're going to take, again, we're going to do the bottom stitch over the top and make your way around the loom doing the e-wrap stitch. We're going to do three rows of the e-wrap, so this row plus two more rows. Now we're going to do a row of the purl stitch. So same technique, taking the loop off of the peg, pulling the yarn up, taking the loop off the peg, putting it over the peg, and tightening. And we're going to do this the entire way around the loom. Now we're back to the e-wrap. So after the purl, we're going to do another row of e-wrap. Now we're going to secure our working yarn and take the bottom over the top again on all pegs. Now we're going to do the e-wrap again. So we are again going to do the e-wrap stitch.
And now we're going to do the purl stitch. Now we're going to do another two rounds of the E-wrap. So we're doing two rounds of the E-wrap stitch. Okay, I'm pushing my stitches down. And it's time to measure. We want there to be five inches from where we start our cuff to where we're going to make our thumb hole. So I'm just going to measure. We're still a little bit off. So I'm going to start wrapping my pegs with the E-wrap. And then I'm going to knit over. Now you can always test your 
glove by placing your wrist inside of it and seeing where about your thumb is it going to start. Usually it's four and a half to five inches, I like to say. So we're going to do another row of E-wrap. And now we're going to do another row of the purl stitch.
Okay. Now we're going to start and do another e-wrap. We're going to wrap around again. There are a lot of e-wraps and purl stitches in this project. All right, we're going to knit over these stitches. We're going to be starting the thumb soon, and I'm going to tell you exactly how you're going to be doing that step by step. Okay, we're starting our thumb, so we're going to slip the first stitch, which means we're not going to knit that first stitch, and we're going to do the e-wrap stitch all the way around the loom until you get to the other side. Okay, we made it. Now we're going to knit off. So we're going to take the bottom over the top, just as if we were doing the round circle, but we're leaving that space in between the two front pegs because we are forming our thumb hole. So it's very important not to continue to wrap. So we leave that space. Push those stitches down. And now we're going to start on our next row here. Take the working yarn and we're going to slip the first stitch, so don't knit the first stitch, and do the same exact thing around as you did the first time. Just do the E wrap until you get to the other side of the loom but do not complete that circle.
Okay, we're going to go back the other way, and again, we're going to slip that first stitch. The total length of the thumb hole is about an inch and a half. And we're going to slip that stitch again and wrap around. I've got my thumb to where I want it, about one and a half inches, so I'm going to go ahead and close the thumb off. So now we are going to do two rows of the e-wrap stitch.
Now we're going to do the purl stitch. So we're going to do another round of the purl stitch. For the rest of this project, it is basically a knit and a purl until you reach your desired length of your fingerless mittens. After my thumb hole, I have about two inches of knitting and purling. So again, after the thumb hole, I have about two inches of knitting and purling. If you want that length to be longer, that's okay. You can make it a little bit longer. Just keep going until you get to where you want to be with your length. Okay, now we are going to start the bind off. So we're going to wrap peg one and peg two. Then we're going to remove peg two, put it on the peg one, and knit over. Then we're going to remove that and place it to the left. This is the basic bind off method. Now we're going to wrap again. It's like a unit, but we're going to wrap it, knit over, move it back over, knit over, remove that stitch from the peg, and move it to the left. Same thing. Take the stitch off the peg, move it to the right, knit over, take that off, move it to the left and tighten. Feel free to pause when you need to. We're going to do this method the entire way around the loom and again this is called the basic bind off. I'm actually going to follow through each step of the entire loom with you so be prepared if you don't need it that's fine but for a lot of people the basic bind off can be confusing if you've never done it before so I just want to be there to show the steps continue doing this and just follow along with me uh, there is going to be a period just a short period while I'm doing this of no talking so you can concentrate on what you're doing.
And we are getting down to our last few pegs, doing the basic bind off. So we're going to wrap that, knit it over, take that off the peg. Now we're down to our last two. We're going to wrap, knit over, remove off the peg, knit over, and then I'm going to cut the working yarn. We're ready to take our mitten off of the loom. And we'll take this loose tail and put it through the loop. And then go ahead and tighten it. We aren't quite done yet. We need to weave and sew in our loose ends at the bottom and at the top, but we'll go ahead and try it on and see how it looks. So I'm just going to attach the top. There's a little space there separating. So I'm going to take my darning needle and my tail and thread it through the loop that will connect it so there's no longer a space there. Tie a knot. And then we're going to sew the loose end into the mitten. Now we're going to do the same for the bottom. Just hide that in and sew it in with your darning needle. And that's going to do it for another pair of easy fingerless mittens. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Bye!